has such a rich history ranging from the Mayans to evocative images of pirates patrolling this coast looking for Spanish plunder here on the Spanish Bay. And later and now as a touristic destination here in, near Merida. I don't know why I didn't start the video with the fact that we, <laughs> we saw literally saw a flamingo oh just flying above the town. I mean, something that is pretty... I have to say, I've traveled a lot in Mexico, but that is the first time I've ever seen a flock of flamingos just... accessible by buses that you can catch at, at the down downtown at the ADO station. The buses will go, depending on the line that you take, anywhere from like around 250 pesos to a more expensive than that. So that comes down to perhaps $12 one way. So it's, it's very accessible. It's kind of isolated. There's not really like a lot of development here yet. Not a lot of like touristic like infrastructure. Only some tours like for of like the nearby mangroves. You see like flamingos, the beach obviously, and small restaurants stuff like that. But nothing to develop here, which I really like. And there is a little bit of seaweed, which you can probably see here behind me. Obviously not as much as Tulum, which is a disaster right now. And for being seaweed season, it's actually not that bad. The sea is pretty shallow, up until perhaps 100 meters in or so. So it seems I have very good hopes for this, for this place. And I'm just kind of wondering if this will be the new like beach destination that we would want to go to while we're here in the area. Loving it so far. came from out of the water it is so warm it is like being embraced by like a jacuzzi well a very lukewarm jacuzzi at least but it, it just feels so good there's it's just a flat 
sandy bottom, pretty shallow. summer more than the late spring so I mean just coming in dipping in the middle of like such a hot day is just the perfect way to pass the time here in like it's on the northern Yucatan Peninsula it's just so hot See, by the end of this video, we'll be melted. I was gonna say tan, but that's a possibility too. Tan would be awesome. Yeah, melted, not melted. so much. Okay, so quick update. We were just sitting here, having a normal conversation by the beach, minding our own business, as one does at the beach, and we saw the flamingos racing by again. I, you know, like I mean, as fast as I scramble to get to get the, the camera out and try to get to find them, it's just so sunny. I could not see them on the screen, and I just I, I miss them. Oh, my God. 
stretch of beach until we left with absolutely no seaweed but it, it looks absolutely beautiful you have all these like sand little little sand pebbles that pop that form so the kids and the families are playing in them you know like a little kitty waiting for babies or young children it's a pretty idyllic place it's pretty it's a pretty slow town hardly any foreign tourists just locals and maybe people from Merida for the most part and some foreigners here and there not yet a big place but uh, like so beautiful got yeah, just such an idyllic sandy way in the town This, ladies and gentlemen, is this woman's obsession. Taking pictures of palm trees and never looking them again. Some of the old colonial architecture still left here in Cisal. Most curiously, I don't know why they decided to do this, but this hundred, I mean, couple hundred year old cannon is just <laughs> like here in the middle of the plaza, just kind of like, just kind of with like nowhere to be. I guess if anybody ever tries to storm the kiosk behind us, I mean, you know, you could probably always use it. Yeah, but just like old, these are like old naval guns used to, used to defend like the coast from like, you know, from a rain, from like really, really far away and just have enough power to just be able to penetrate a ship at a distance. So, yeah, it's... It's a most interesting town indeed. So Cisal, although it has its origins as like an old Mayan Port, port, like port settlement that was later resettled by the Spanish. It wasn't until the early 19th century that it actually became an official port because Spanish colonial authorities used to have a tight control for, of everything that entered and left Mexico to prevent smuggling. 
along just the whole of the Spanish main. And right behind me is the fort of Cizal, built in the mid 19th century when Mexico was independent, as well as the lighthouse that dates from like a, the same time period. But even though, I mean, there's just so much history here in this little, in this little fishing village. And although it looks humble now, it used to be one of the most important ports in, on this side of the Caribbean and, and the Gulf of Mexico. So it has a rich storied history that I feel is worth exploring and reading about. It's just a very interesting coast. behind us, I mean the coast just keeps going. It's just a long, long beach here, northern tip of Utah. Perfect place to bring a backpack, small backpack, food, water for a day, get lost exploring the beach, digging in the sun. It's so laid back here, so peaceful, especially with now this golden light is just absolutely incredibly peaceful. This is another thing that she does. She will lean against things, put up her leg like a flamingo and flamingo out. Pretty good to just sit down after a day at the beach, to just have a snack or something. <laughs> That's it. Just have a beer. This beautiful woman. A little bit of guac. And some salsa, some Mark Anthony, some Willy Cologne, some little pants. Prices are still kind of not caught up yet. Like in comparison to the rest of the peninsula, like on the Caribbean side, you know everything is so expensive. But here, you know you're, we're still having we're still ha having a beer for 40 pesos. Just got the kiwis. You can so for a beer, water. Guacamole and some and other snack. 
it's like ten dollars you know 200 pesos ten dollars like for all of it let's say for like a tourist touristy place right here less than a block away from the beach i don't think it's i don't think it's too pricey i was seeing other prices like a dollar for for um a dollar an hour for parking or um fried fish all over not, not and not the prices that you would see at the other at the other end of the coast so it's a pretty affordable day trip to come and just spend the day here have eat like have a beer lunch even like dinner here I don't, although i don't think that the night is like gonna be too exciting but still pretty nice place to be if you want to not spend like a lot of money and be at the beach so now after a long long day of exploring Cisal, we are headed home i think we got a bit of a tan didn't we <laughs> he's obsessed with getting tan apparently you've mentioned it like 10 oh times oh my god we are we are the same shade of brown now. Well, that's amazing be sure to visit Cisal if you're here in Yucatan, especially on the Merida side. It is very much worth it. And I feel that we are going to be coming back here in the next days, maybe hopefully to catch another glimpse of those flamingos that we just became completely obsessed by. I don't know if do you have anything else to say before you, you are done? Well, I would just say that this is so, so worth it. And it's about 45 minutes, you know, out of Merida. So uh, this just is going to be our go-to. You know, we're going to be spending a little time in there. Oh, yeah. Now. And I just think, like, okay, any day, you know, you've got some time. Like, we're going to head to Sea South for sure. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be sick of Sea South at the end. It's that good. <laughs> So catch you later, travelers, and catch us on our next travels. Bye! <laughs>